All right, let's take a look at another common pattern in synthesis. So, and this often involves a reaction in which you want to change the length of the carbon chain. You want to increase it. And generally, when that's the case, you're usually doing that through a terminal alkyne. And you can lengthen the chain. So, what you got to know, though, is that to make a terminal alkyne, you generally make it through E2 elimination. But you've got to have two leaving groups. So, you either got to have an alkane with two uh, halogens. Potentially you could have a, an alkene with one, but that's not the most likely thing to see in a synthesis context, FYI. Uh, but if you started with an alkene, you have to realize, oh, I need two leaving groups, so I can turn this into an alkane that has two bromines, and we pull that off with Br2 and our inert solvent like either CH2Cl2 dichloromethane or CCl4 uh, carbon tetrachloride. Uh, and in this case, once you've got that vicinal dihalide, you can do E2 elimination by using excess sodium amide followed by water, and we'll do E2 elimination to form that triple bond. Now that we've got that triple bond in the terminal alkyne, we can deprotonate it. So with sodium amide, that's what step one would do. And then we could come and do backside attack, kick off the leaving group, so and add this group right here. So finally, uh, one of the common patterns in this as well, when you're doing reactions with alkynes, is that you can end it with one of three alternate reductions. Either you can reduce it all the way to an alkane, you can reduce it to a cis alkene using H2 and Lindler's catalyst, or you can do your metal reduction, uh, like sodium and liquid ammonia, to get a trans alkene. And again, this is a really important point of synthesis, because a professor can really test you on this, because there's three different options, and do you know the difference? So, all the way to an alkane, so just your normal H2PDC or H2 platinum or something like that. Uh, cisalkene, H2 and Linlar's catalyst, that poison catalyst, or to a transalkene, that's your metal reduction here, in this case, sodium or lithium or potassium uh, in liquid ammonia. All right, in this example, uh, it's the first example to see where the carbon skeleton it does not match from reactant to product. We've got three carbons in the reactant, but we've got one, two, three, four, five in the product. So it's going to be two carbons longer. And the question is, where do these three carbons of the reactant match up with three carbons in the product? And one thing we should keep in mind is that with an alkyne, we have the potential of either having made this bond or this bond or both. We can make either bond adjacent to the alkyne through an acetylide ion. And so in this case, the question is, which of those is more likely the bond that we made? Uh, and again, if we're starting with three carbons, I think it's more likely that we made this one instead. If we would have focused on the other one, we'd have had to break it up into a single carbon chain and a four carbon chain, and we're starting with three, so that wouldn't have been uh, great. But in this case, we can start with a three carbon chain on this side and then we'll attach it to a two carbon chain on this side, and therefore the three carbons I've got highlighted in red match up with these three carbons right here. So in this case, first thing we should realize is that we have a, a longer carbon chain in the product, and we're probably gonna be using an acetylide somewhere along the way. That's your big way of getting the carbon chain longer. And so in this case, I need to turn this into an acetylide ion somewhere along the way. Uh, if we start working this backwards though, knowing that I need that acetylide ion, so then to get here, we simply would have added NaNH2 to deprotonate that terminal alkyne, and then we would have needed a two carbon SN2 reaction, so two carbons with a good leaving group. So, and that would have pulled this off. Deprotonate and then nucleophilic attack. So the question then is how do we make this guy? How do we make an alkyne? Well, again, we're starting with an alkane. To make an alkyne, we need to do two rounds of elimination. And to do two rounds of elimination, I need two leaving groups, either on the same carbon or on adjacent carbons. We saw in our common pattern that just came up uh, that I can have them on adjacent carbons, and I know how to pull that off. But technically, we could have had these two leaving groups on either carbon of the alkyne. So we really got three options here for how to form this. Now, it turns out getting two bromines on the same carbon is just not the easiest thing, starting from the alkane that we have, and you're not gonna come up with a great way of accomplishing that. So, however, we can pull this off in getting bromines on adjacent carbons with an alkene reaction. In this case, again, Br2 and inert solvent, like either dichloromethane or carbon tetrachloride. Uh, so that's gonna pull that off, and the question is then, how do we make an alkene? Well, we make an alkene through an elimination reaction. We already have our good leaving group, the bromine, 
And in this case, it's on a primary carbon, so we, we've got to worry about SN2 and E2 competing. If I want to make sure that we do E2, I should use the bulky base. So in this case, we only have one adjacent carbon, that's this one. And so the alkene can only form in one location. I don't have to worry about like Zaitse versus Hoffman or anything like this. Uh, there's only one possible alkene that can form, and it's the one we want, so we'll get a great yield. And because we use the bulky base, we don't have to worry about much in the, in the way of SN2 competing with it. Uh, so this is your synthesis here. We got one two, three, four steps on this one. This is about as challenging as it's going to get at this stage of OCHEM.